Late 1938, German forces received orders from Adolf Hitler to occupy the Sudetenland, areas of Czechoslovakia that bordered Germany having large ethnic German populations. Permission for Hitler to do this had come from none other than Britain and France, following protracted negotiations that had not included the Czechoslovaks, all part of the shameful campaign to appease Hitler, those doing so thinking that they could stop a Second World War with Germany. The Czech army was ordered by its government to withdraw from the contested Sudetenland region and not resist the German columns that moved over the border in early October 1938. But one example of resistance was encountered by the advancing German forces, a completely unexpected and surreal act of Czech defiance. As a column of German tanks and vehicles moved across the border, the village of Bucina in the Bohemian Forest, the Germans found their path blocked by the most unexpected vision. A medieval knight, dressed in armour, sat atop a horse. The Germans had come face to face with Josef Menchik, the self-proclaimed last knight of Stratovice. Over his black tunic, Menchik wore a front and back plate armour with shoulder guards and plate skirts, and atop this he wore an open-faced Morion-style metal helmet with a feather plume, the type worn by conquistadors. Around his waist hung a long sword, and his right hand, the pole resting on his saddle, was a medieval battle-axe. The leading German tank jerked to a halt, the commander staring in complete surprise at the bearded knight who sat imperiously upon his horse, staring back at him. Had the German seen a ghost, perhaps, from the medieval period, or was this apparition he saw before him real? Indeed it was. Josef Menchik was born in 1870 to wealthy landowners in the village of Dubrusk in what was then the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and he was raised in a rented apartment in the local castle, which was owned by the Schwarzenberg family. Josef apparently dreamed of one day owning the entire castle. In 1911, the building burned, and the Schwarzenbergs sold the ruin to the now 41-year-old Menchik, who realised his dream. Restoring the castle slowly, Menchik lived like his medieval forebears, eschewing both electricity and any modern conveniences. And like a medieval noble, he rejected modern forms of transportation, riding everywhere on one of his horses, normally whilst wearing half armour and armed with a sword. The locals saw Menchik as a harmless eccentric and quite a character, and he turned part of his castle into a museum to display his elaborate collection of armour and weapons. Where he obtained his armour was clear, it was medieval French in origin, but how he obtained it was less clear. It was believed that he had smuggled it into Czechoslovakia. Locals could never quite work out where he obtained the funds to maintain the castle or his collection of antiquities. But a lot of his collection seems to have come from France, perhaps illegally. Despite being a bit shady, Menchik seemed determined to live up to the chivalrous and noble nature of the real medieval knights, and on discovering that German forces would be crossing into Czech territory on the morning of the 1st of October 1938, he decided to act alone and try to stop one of their columns. Donning his armour, taking his weapons, and mounting his charger, Menchik rode 30 kilometres to the village of Bucina, on the German-Czech frontier. And so it was that Menchik faced down a different kind of armoured enemy, German panzers. Apparently the Germans were so astounded by a knight on horseback confronting them that for some time the German column was indeed halted. However, the Germans soon realised that Menchik was some sort of local eccentric and ordered him aside at gunpoint and continued their advance. But Menchik's little gesture of defiance soon entered national legend. The Germans didn't harm him, and indeed he continued to live in his crumbling castle until 1945, when his home was forcibly taken from him by the new Czechoslovak government. Josef Menchik died on the 19th of November 1945 at the age of 75 in his son's house, and his old castle was converted into a school. Since 1989, the castle has been progressively restored by locals, and Menchik and his bizarre stand against the Germans have become part of the popular memory of the Czech people and nation. 
Many thanks for all your support in 2023. Have a happy new year, and I will see you on the other side in 2024.